Okay, pea spots. I have worked for 10 years to not have my barn smell of ammonia, um, because I've been in barns that did, and I worked hard on how to get this right. Uh, very limited budget for bedding. I'll talk louder over the train. Uh, at any rate, so pea is public enemy number one in my barn. I don't know about other barns. This barn, public enemy number one. It destroys the esophageal hairs in their, in their esophagus. It eats their feet. Um, so, when I come into a stall, I'm going to shift this stall. The first thing I want to do is remove the urine. You cannot put urine through the shifter. It's kind of obvious. I look for the tip of the iceberg. I am going to use a lot of metaphors here to help you remember. So in this one, it doesn't need it. Sometimes the pee is hiding under the bedding, and you'll see a little wet spot in the top. That's the iceberg. The first thing I do is I want to find the edge of the pee. So I turn the shovel over. This is a shovel. I turn it over backwards. And I start to just gently peel away what might be the edge. OK, that's not it. I'm looking for the wet mat. And what I might do is do that. So I go, ah, oh, there's my mat. So that's, I work with the mat as a road map. That's what tells me where the pee really is. So I'm just going to go around pulling the clean bedding away from the pee pile. Let's clear that out so it does not get mixed up. See that? It's mixed a little bit. I'm just going to shove it in that direction towards the pee. That's dry. Dry mat, wet mat. So I'm just going to pull everything away from that. Now this looks like a second pea spot right there. I'm gonna, how do I test it? How do I check? Cut the cake. Pretend this is a knife. Go right in the center. Do that. That is a pea. There's another one. It's next to the other one. All right, so I might just push these together. Again, I'm just finding my edges. The first thing I want to do, that poop, I'll just shove it that way. I'm finding my edges, because I don't want to take out clean bedding, and I really don't want to mix the urine with the clean bedding. So if I can get, and by the way, you can if you can cleanly get any poop like that in there, shovel it out. It's a hole in one. All right, where's that? There, it's dry, it's dry, it's not. There, okay. You can go in there, and you can go in there. That's all right. Okay, so now I have safely removed the clean bedding that's going to get sifted later. Here's my pee. Is this pee? I don't know. Maybe not. Eh, it's half and half. I did that. Okay, now, once you have the clean separated away and you've got a spot that you know is urine, check yourself this way. Actually, sometimes if you turn this over, it'll actually help soak up the wet wet. But there is my map. Okay, I've got some bedding here, but again, it's mixed. It's kind of mixed. That's fine. Okay. Okay, now, the whole art with this is to think wet spot on the map and keep pulling the P in. In. Do not push it out to the dry. We don't want to mix this with that. So I just turn the shovel over and I tape it. I also have a pea broom. If you don't want to do the shovel, you can sweep with a metal pea broom. That's going to be in the video. I'll show a picture of it. You're basically pulling it in. Just pulling it in. And now I'm going to get some, but I'm not going to keep going that way. Stop the shovel halfway through there. Gone. You're right, Sean. You should have put it right there. Okay. Pull it in. As you're doing this, you're getting more and more moisture up off that mat. Don't go all the way out there. Stop your shovel. Pull all this back over here. It gives you more runway, more room to use the shovel. By the way, I'm not putting a ton of pressure on this. It's not like it has to be this, ah, I'm just using the blade of the shovel to scrape it over. That's it. A lot smaller, but again, pull it back. So this way you're not coming into contact with any of the dry clean bed. You're only working with pee right now. And I do not try to save bedding with pee. I take it off. It's gone. If it's got urine on it, it's gone. That is how you can open the doors in the morning here in the winter and your eyes don't water from the ammonia. 
and then when my horse is sleeping and not all night, it's really bad for them. The rest, you're gonna do the best you can. It's okay, I know the stalls are gonna be, you know, as best they can. What I will ask is that everybody focuses on this while I'm gone, just so that we don't have an ammonia barn when I get back. It's fairly simple. We'll do one more, but and I'll use the broom. But we'll do, that's how I do pee. Okay. Okay, so here, we're in Gloria's stall now. And uh, Gloria is rarely a candidate for shifting. If you kind of take a look at how she keeps her house, there's really no reason to shift her usually. About 5% of the time, this stall gets shifted. Whereas opposed to Molly, who gets shifted every single day, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna do the pea broom on this pea spot just to show the difference. This is the pea broom. It is the only yellow broom in our barn. It just worked out that way. It actually says pea broom on it. I Maybe I'll relabel that. But how you can really tell is it has metal bristles. It has metal, these are, these are metal. They're very good at getting the remnants up the mat. So I'm just gonna set it aside for now. I will use that so you can see how that goes. Um, all right, so this is a little interesting because where is the pea? I don't know. First of all, I think her foot might have shoved this back, so I'm just gonna just get that little piece out. Okay, now, I'm just gonna start combing. I call this, I'm just combing it back. All right, there's wet there. Is there wet under there? There is a little bit. All right. So all I wanna do in the beginning is find my road map. I wanna find, I wanna find where the P is Really, Gloria has a pretty deep bed because she's so neat. She gets a deep bed, uh, but that can mean it's a little tricky to find where her pee is and where it isn't because it's in a deep bed. Put that back there because I don't think it's that deep. Oh, it might be though. So see, I don't really know when I'm doing this. I don't know where the pee is. It's sort of a search thing. I'm not going to try and save any of that. It's mixed. you can check if you've got, you can just scrape that over and kind of pull it up to see if there's pee there that is a little bit. Yep, see there's the hair wet. I don't want to pull it for that. It's right there. Yep. And because she peed this is maybe two peas or just one really big one, but it takes up a lot of bed. Um, I don't want to, there's no way to save this. There's no way to save it. It is urinated on. However, here now, because there's a lot of dry and there's a lot of wet at the bottom, I am going to turn that over just to let it absorb up some of the extra. Because there is bedding in here that is dry. But you realize why I can't save it, because it's mixed with the urine already. There's that map. I, I don't like throwing that out, but there's how do I save it? How do I save it? It's already been mixed with the Okay, now I've got that room. I'm not going past the wet spot. Pull it back. Give yourself a brand new remedy. She's got a pretty good spot. Molly's good for this too, Molly. Giant pea spot. So you have more room to work with. Okay. We're ready for the room now. So I'm going to put all this into the center of there. Set this down for a second. Pea room. This is where the metal bristles really help because you can get all that in the crack there. I'll be honest, the broom is probably even more efficient. I just tend myself not to use it as much, but it is A-OK. -okay. This is a really nice way. It might even be a little easier physically. Especially for that last bit. I'm pretty meticulous on the peaks. I want this to dry. When it comes to prepping for the shifter, you'll see how much less. Okay, and I just want to show one little thing about Gloria Stahl. Because she's not shifted usually, 
because she is this neat, I want to show you how easy it is to get her poop. So you take the fork, start with one part, just slide it on the ground. There's very little bedding back here. I keep your stall very light in the back because of how good she is. So do you see behind that I have a fork that's basically all manure and there's no little remnants left behind here? Because I don't need to shake it. If the bedding is light back here, I really don't need to shake the fork at all or tap it or anything. I just move it back a little bit to get that out. Works very nice with just poop. It only takes a few minutes to do that. That's why I don't shift her stall usually. Every now and then she makes a mess and then I say, oh, guess what, Gloria? Um, all right, great, there's a piece pot number two. Okay, I don't have anyone to video today, so I'm just doing this to try and show an example. Um, so I have worked very hard for 10 years or more to not have my barn smell at all of ammonia, especially in the winter when you open the doors in the morning after it's been shut up all night and the horses are in. Um, ammonia is very, very damaging to horses um, breathing and also their feet. And so anyway, I, I work very hard to remove all of the urine from the stalls and especially before shifting. Um, and I'm gonna have a video hopefully on shifting. Anyway, I just wanna show this pea spot. So it has been gathered up, but not completely. And I'm gonna try and go in close enough to see. So it is now about four o'clock in the afternoon. And this was done this morning at some point this morning. Um, normally, if, it's, if you get all of the wetness and the urine up, uh, it will dry within about 40, 40 minutes to an hour. It'll be dry mat, like, kind of like that, how that one is half dry. Um, the other thing I want to point out about this particular pea spot cleanup is that if you look over here, you're going to see the sun is competing a little bit, but if I go closer, there we go you're gonna see there's quite a bit of specks of pee in the clean bedding, or what might be clean bedding. I don't know yet, I have to investigate this. But I'm gonna show what it looks like after, and then hopefully at some point I'll have someone to video uh, how I do it, or how it's done. Um, this is the one thing I'll kind of be adamant about. The rest is do the best you can. I know I'm leaving alertly, abruptly for 10 days, I'm really grateful for everybody who is gonna be here to take care of these babies in the winter time. Um, so do the best you can with everything else, but please, I'm gonna make some more videos about pee and pee spots because it's very important that this gets done in entirety. The rest of it, like I said, do the best you can. Uh, they, will, they will survive, but this is something that is, is important. So I'm gonna document it as best I can. Okay, thanks. Okay, here is another example of a pea spot that I'm gonna tidy up. Uh, so you'll see there's a lot of remnants of the urinated bedding still there. It's, it's late in the afternoon and it's still wet. If I can get close enough, you'll see there is actually still some puddling. There we go. There's actually some puddling of urine still in the spot right there that's soaking wet. That, that can't stay in the stall. And I'm gonna show some tools too. We have some specific tools to help with this if you like. I use a shovel only when I do pea spots. However, uh, Dory and some of the others here love our pea broom. This is a broom that is for pea spots. Please, please do not use this same broom on the hay plate. Please do not use this same broom to sweep up the dust under the hay and where they eat mainly because these are metal bristles and they're very good at pea spots. But I don't want all that where they eat their hay, please. So don't use this broom on anything but pea spots. If we zoom in closely here, sorry for the terrible camera work, but if you zoom in closely here, I will relabel this maybe, but it actually says pea broom, pea broom. It's the only broom with metal bristles. bristles. It lives in the bedding stall. Uh, it is used for pea spots. So if you like the broom idea, I'll sh I, I will make a video of how that works and you can use it. It's a yellow broom too, yellow for pea. See, yellow urine, pea, labeled pea broom, metal bristles, very good at cleaning up this. And I will, I will do a video of how that works if you would prefer the broom as opposed to a shovel. Works beautifully, Dory does it, amazing job. 
doing doing the room. Just please remember not to use this broom on the you know place where they eat their food, the hay. Don't use this. There's a broom for that. There's another broom for that. Okay, uh, we'll get back to this. Just it's just part one. I'll put it together. Hopefully, if I can edit it to part two on P. Okay. Another quick video of a tool that is very very useful. I use this every single day. Um, I'm just going to point it out. I call this the finger hay rake. I call it a finger hay rake because, and again, sorry for the terrible camera work, but it's a, it's a flimsy, very lightweight metal rake. The, the, whatever you call that, the tines or whatever, are very flexible. Um, so the only purpose I really use this for is for scraping the bedding into a pile for the shifter. I do that. Very good at getting the corners and all that. So it's used to, pre to prep the pile for the shifter. It's new job. But I've used it for quite a long time on getting the hay scraps. So this is Gloria's stall, and I have already removed, or recycled, I'll call it, the hay that was left behind uh, for what could be eaten. And I actually put it into hay bags because it was very clean. I put it into the nets. I normally don't do that. It can always go out in small piles outside. I'd uh, rather not throw it away, but questionable to leave it in the stall for the overnight hay when they need warm and all that. So I prefer that we start with a fresh floor and the good hay can go outside to them during the day. Either if it's really clean in a bag, in a net, or if it's, mm, you're not sure, you can just use this, I'll, I'll show how that's done, um, to gather up the good hay and bring it out to them. Now, this that's left, is the scrap hay. This is the hay that's been mixed in with the bedding. There's some that's near a pea spot. I'm not really sure if it was part of the pea spot. You know, it's dusty. It's not much left. It's a very thin layer. So I'm gonna take this out and either use it as Pam in some of the tubs or just toss it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a video on how this finger hay rake can really be your friend in gathering up this hay, saving a ton of time and doing a really effective job. The hay clogs the shifter. The hay like this will clog up the shifter. You'll, if you try it, you're welcome to try it, but you will see what I mean. Nothing moves down the conveyor with, with a lot of hay on it. And then if there is poop in there, it shakes and shakes and shakes forever and doesn't go anywhere. So hence, uh, that's why I do gather up the scrap hay. I'll try to do a video. I am gonna do a video of that happening so you can see how this rake works. But there is the finger rake. If anybody's wondering what is she talking about, that's my name for it. There you go.